Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing to make a character portrait window. We're going to add support for multiple windows at once. Let's get started. So we previously created our portrait window. We can click the character to show the window and it shows a view of the character. I can click this button to hide the window. But if I click on this character and then on this one, then the first one is no longer visible since we only have one window. Let's add support to be able to view both characters at once. First, let's spawn one window per character. So in order to do that, let's convert our window into a prefab, which will be instantiated every time we click on a different character. Let's start off by making a new folder, name it prefabs, and make a new prefab and call it PF window character portrait. Let's drag our window into our prefab. So this is what we're going to instantiate per character. Okay, so in our character portrait code, so in here we're going to make a public static void show static. This will be the static function that we're going to use to create new windows. In here, we're going to spawn our prefab. Now in order to spawn, we need a reference to the prefab and our canvas. Now normally I would create a separate class to handle asset references, but in order to keep this video focused on the character portrait window, let's just add the references in here in our game handler. So in here, let me make a public static game handler for my instance and add a public canvas for my canvas and a public transform for the PF window character portrait. Again, if you're using this in your own game, make sure you place the asset references where they make sense. On awake, let's set the instance to this and on the character portrait, let's instantiate the prefab into the canvas. So instantiate the game handler the instance and grab the PF character portrait. Set the parent to our canvas transform parent. And let's give it a random position so they don't spawn on top of each other. Okay, let's grab the get component of our window character portrait script. And we're going to call the show function using the follow transform that we're going to receive in here. Send it in here. Now we want this class to only be accessed through this static function. So let's make this show private. Okay, so now on our game handler, let's use the show static function instead of the normal show function. And in order to use static, we're going to access the class directly instead of an instance. And we no longer need this instance. So let's drag our references in the editor and test. All right, so here I am and I should be able to spawn a new window every time we click on a character. Click on that one, window spawns, click on that one and a window spawns. Yep, there you go. I can close them and open them again. Great. All right, so now as you can see, there's an issue with the camera view. It's spawning two windows, but they're both showing the same thing. The reason is because we're using only one render texture. We need to create a new render texture for each window. So back in our character portrait script on our show, let's create a new render texture. Let's apply this render texture to our camera. So transform.find our camera, get the camera component and set the target texture to our render texture. We also need to set the raw image to display this rendered texture. So go into the transform.find our raw image, get the component of our raw image, which is part of the using unity engine.ui. Get the raw image and set the texture to our rendered texture. All right, so we're now creating a rendered texture dynamically per each window. Let's give it a try and see if it's working. Okay, here's the characters. I click on this one and there's that camera and this one and it created a new render texture. So each window is now correctly displaying a separate view. All right, so now that the spawning seems to be working, let's handle on our cleanup when we hide the window. Since we are instantiating a new character every time we use the show static, we are no longer going to mess around with the set active. So we can remove this from here and from here and remove the hide in there. Now on our hide, first of all, it's going to be private and the hide will no longer actually hide the window, but rather destroy it. So let's rename this to a more accurate name and call it destroy window. 
So in here, we're going to destroy our game object. All right, so let's test and everything should be exactly the same, but now each window should be destroyed rather than simply hidden. So here I am, I can click this one and this one, I can close and close and it all closes. And if you check out the canvas, you can see that it's completely empty. I spawn one and there's one, I close it and it vanishes. Okay, great. So now as you can see, there's a potential issue. I click on this camera and it shows the window as it should, but I click again and it shows another window. Now this might be intended behavior for your game, but chances are what you really want is only one window per character. So let's keep track of what windows are spawned and who they are following. So in our code here, in order to keep track of our windows, let's use a dictionary. A private static dictionary. Now a dictionary contains a key and a value. So we're going to use the follow transform as our key and a window character portrait as our value. Window dictionary. So on our show static, when we are instantiating new windows, let's first of all, if it equals null, let's instantiate our dictionary. And before we spawn anything, let's test if that key already exists in the dictionary. So if dictionary dot contains key, and the key is going to be this follow transform, if it does contain that key, then there's already a window following this follow transform. So we don't want to spawn a duplicate. So we only want to execute this code if the dictionary does not contain that key. And after we do it, we're going to assign into the follow transform, into this key, we're going to send our character portrait. All right, so as you can see on our show static, we are calling it with a follow transform. Inside, we're testing if our private dictionary is instantiated. If not, then we instantiate it. We're going to test if it already contains a key to test whether or not a window following this particular transform is already spawned. If it does not contain that key, then no window is currently active. So let's spawn a window and set it to show and follow this transform. And finally set this dictionary on this key to contain this window. Okay, so now the spawning logic should be correct. Now when we destroy, let's remove the entry from the dictionary. All right, let's test it out. So here I am, I can click this one and shows that window. Click that one, shows that window. Now if I click again, and there you go, no more windows are spawned since this one is already in here. If I hide it and I click it again, it shows another one. And same for this character. Can't spawn duplicates, but I can close and hide it again. Great. So there you have it. We have added support for multiple windows showing different views and limited to one window per character. In the next video, we're going to add some character stats to our window. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.